بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد A very important question we need to address as some of our brothers and sisters are tested in ways that others of us may not be tested with. And that is we're going to look at the issue of masturbation. And especially during the holy month of Ramadan, Akramakum Allah. And Hafidhakum Allah that masturbation in Islam is impermissible. And this is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the sin of those people who do not safeguard their private parts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mu'mineen, وَالَّذِينَ وَالَّذِينَ فِي فُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ says in praise of those believers and the characteristics of the believers that they are the people they establish the prayer and they do the other righteous deeds and they safeguard their private parts. So from that general evidence safeguarding one's private parts that includes avoiding masturbation. Also, Allah subhanahu, uh, also the Prophet sallallahu alaihi uh, or in a hadith of Ibn Abbas or a narration on Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu where he mentioned that just to loosely paraphrase this narration that it is like the akhafa daralain it is like the master, masturbating is the lesser of the two evils meaning it's not like zina it's not on the level of that committing adultery or fornication but it's still a sin but it's the lesser obviously it would be preferred over falling into uh, fornication however it's still a sin so we should avoid it moving to the issue of masturbation during the holy month of Ramadan again that's impermissible and masturbation refers to akram of Mullah to seeking out uh, to have an orgasm and this can be done with a hand or, or various other ways in which uh, a person falls into this uh, sin and this is done with of course shahwat and desires and it doesn't take uh, extensive explanation but something that's important also in the shara is that they refer to it as ikhraj al-mini istida'an li shahwatin bi ghayri jima' so wa akhrajahu bi yadihi o yad zawjatuhu so as a sharia term it's defined in the sharia as far as masturbation it is to seek to uh, to to desire or to 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 strive to uh, ejaculate and this and of course this is with desires with shahwa without having sexual relations regardless of whether it is done with the person the person does it themselves with their own hands or that their spouse does it for them. This is still considered istimna, according to the Sharia principle or Sharia term. Another important thing, the second thing we want to look at, the ruling regarding masturbation during Ramadan. So of course we know that it's Muharram. It's Muharram during Ramadan and outside of Ramadan. It's not permissible. And as far as the hukum regarding Ramadan, not only is it haram, but it yufsid the sun. And the person who does this, that they must make up the day in which they broke their fast. So meaning, 
that by masturbating, that it breaks your fast, and you are required to, to make up that day. So outside of Ramadan, you will have to make up that day. So that is a sin that we want to uh, avoid. Ta'ala. May Allah preserve us all. Ameen. And this view regarding masturbation, or this opinion regarding making up the fast and that it breaks your fast, this is the, uh, according to the, the view of most of the Hanafi scholars, and most of the, the, the Shafi'i scholars and the Hanabila. The meaning the scholars, the, those who follow uh, the madhab of Imam Ahmed. And here in the book, it's not mentioned about the Malikiya, so I assume that the Malikiya per, perhaps have a different view uh, on this, this opinion. But we're going to stick with what appears to be the strongest evidence regarding this. So we know that it breaks our fast, according to most of the scholars, and that it is necessary to make up the fast outside of Ramadan. The evidence from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, is that on Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, Yaqulullah azza wa jal, asun li, wa ana ajzi bihi yad'u shahwatuhu wa akluhu, وَشَرْبُهُ مِنْ أَجْلِي Abi Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه said that the or narrated that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that Allah the Almighty said fasting is for me and I reward it reward the one who leaves his desires leaves his eating and leaves his drinking for my sake the edgy or min edgy and this is narrated in bukhari and muslim how do we understand this evidence how does it apply to the issue we're talking about the wajid dalala that the ulama look at this the way they look at this evidence to deduce this ruling is that they say that the one who does not, the one who uh, seeks seeks to ejaculate Allah, with their desires, uh, is is following their desires without any doubt. So this is how we can apply this evidence, how this evidence is delil or evidence that that is impermissible, because the person who can t who strives to ejaculate. That they have not left their desires. So during the holy month of Ramadan, they have not fulfilled that requirement. As, the, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam narrated on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this hadith al-Qudsi. Uh, and then the dalil from the qiyas. Also the ulama, they make uh, qiyas in this mas'ala. The evidence from, from uh, comparative jurisprudent uh, jurisprudent reasoning is that or analogy is that it is in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the person who seeks to vomit that they uh, that they uh, they have broken their fast. So if one, if not a person who vomits accidentally, but the person who seeks to vomit, that they, for whatever reason, I guess they want, uh, you know, I, I don't really know why someone would seek to vomit, but anyhow, some people, they seek to vomit while they're fasting. So when a person is intentionally vomiting, this breaks their fast. And this is also, it weakens their body by the food that leaves their body so it, it makes their their body uh, weaker and one of the reasons why is because their body of course their stomach will be left empty and they will be become uh, hungry and thirsty very rapidly 
So likewise, they make this analogy that likewise in, in this hukum, this ruling, they say that the one who seeks to ejaculate, that they are weakening themselves and that this is, this is causing a weakness in their body because and that is why the Prophet Sallallahu ordered or uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said in a hadith that uh, encouraging us to when after having relations that a person should take a shower to also revive them perhaps maybe for to be able to have relations again uh, another time that this revives the body by taking the shower so this lets us know that what in order to be revived means that it had weakness so this is the qiyas that the ulama they're using with the person who seeks to vomit they're making an analogy between them and the person who seeks to ejaculate that both of them uh, weaken the body in one way or another and they have their evidence from that from the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and another very important thing, and this is according to the ijma, this is consensus of the ulama, that there is no kathara for this, meaning that there's no expiation, meaning a person does not have to pay or uh, free a slave or pay or feed the poor or uh, fast two consecutive months, which is different for the person who has intercourse during Ramadan, the one who has intercourse during Ramadan, it's a different ruling. They have they have uh, to not only make up their fast, but they have to do kafara. They have to expiate for it. So there's ijma of ulama that the person who masturbates does not have to. So it is not like intercourse. So that's something that we have to realize that also the person who does uh, ejaculate, it is not the same ruling as a person who has sexual intercourse. Although they're both muharram, they both break your fast according to the to the majority of the ulama. Uh, let's look at a couple of other issues regarding this. The ruling for the one who, uh, you know, hugs and kisses their spouse and and so forth while they're uh, while they're fasting, and then it they have um, if they kiss and hug their spouse anywhere except their private parts, except for their private parts of Karamakum Allah, then, uh, and then they, so they weren't intending, and then they, they didn't, couldn't control themselves, and they broke, they, they, here, they would break, their fast is broken, and they have to make up that day as well. So, this is the thing, if they have uh, ejaculated, meaning they've kissed and they've hugged and they got their desires built up and they actually ejaculated from that, then they must make up their fast as well. They must make qada. And that's all they have to do regarding that. They have to make up that day for fasting. And their fast is broken, of course. And the dalil for that, the evidence for that is the ijma ahla ilm ala dhalik. So the consensus of the ulama are upon this. Uh, and from the ulama that mentioned that this is ijma, that this is a consensus, is Imam al-Mawardi, who I believe was Shafi'i, I believe, and Ibn Qudama, al, uh, who was um, from the Hanabila, you know, Imam uh, Ibn Qudama, the one who wrote the book, the great book in fiqh, uh, al-Mughni, and others in Umdat al and, and so forth. So, in this situation, and this is also very important, the person who does this, that there is no kafara for them, as we mentioned as well, and this is the madhab of the Jamhur ulama, majority of the ulama, from the Hanafiya, from the Shafi'iyya, and the Hanabila, uh, and that's what, so, the Nas, because there's no Nas, or no text, which shows and illustrates that the person would have to make kafara. The kafara is for the one who has sexual intercourse during Ramadan and Karamakum Allah. So the person who was uh, massaging or you know kissing and, and things like this, their spouse, and they ejaculated, you know, the, the desires, and they we're not talking about premature ejaculate. We're talking about sperm or what have you. They had a climax at Karamakum Allah. 
then this person must make up their fast, but they do not have to pay any, um, they do not have to free a slave or they do not have to uh, fast two consecutive months or, or any of those other expiations. Then another issue arises, what about the person who, uh, what is the ruling regarding the person who looks at something, maybe looks at the opposite sex or what have you, whatever induces their shahwa, their desires, perhaps they're looking at other things like uh, on the TV or the internet, uh, pornography or something muharram, that there's two issues there, I've just brought up uh, two issues. One issue, of course, if the person, they look at the opposite sex, they're not, they are, we're talking about if they're staring at them, meaning they're taking more than one glance, they're really checking them out. This, of course, is not permissible. And uh, the Hanabila and some of the other scholars uh, say that this breaks a fast. They're, this breaks your fast. I Meaning you're looking at the you're looking at the opposite sex. Your desires have come, and you you or you take more than one look. You keep looking until you actually uh, it induces or causes the person to uh, to ejaculate. Then this person has broken their fast, according to the uh, the scholars, the the Hanabila, those who follow the Madhab of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, rahmatullahi alayhi. And then some of the other, some other ulama also hold this view. But, and there's no kafara, also there's no expiation. So other than that, they've broken their fast and they must make up that day. Um, so... The khalasa taqol on this issue is that this is the same ruling as a person who has broken their fast by uh, by uh, masturbation, the karma law, because both of them they're intending to do. We're not talking about someone they saw something and they were overtaken, but instead this person was taking, you know, looking, looking, looking until they ejaculated. So this is the same ruling as the person who has masturbated, letting us know that it's Muharram, we should avoid it, and that the person who does it, they've broken their fast, and they should make it up. Then we reach another mas'ala that they, uh, the Shaykh has mentioned here, and this is the ruling regarding the person who is just thinking, they're not looking at anything, but they just, their mind wanders and they, they're always aroused like this. So this person, they, the person who, who is doing this and they haven't done anything. They're not masturbating, they're not looking at the Muharram, they're not looking at TV or pornography or whatever to induce this feelings, but they just, it's on their mind, it's heavy on their heart. This person does not, uh, it does not break their fast. So the person who's just, who just was thinking about it, it doesn't break their fast. Um, and this is according to the, this view or opinion is according to the majority of the Hanafi scholars, majority of the Shafi'iya, and majority of the Hanabila as well. So all the three madhabs, those three madhabs, they all share uh, the majority of those scholars have hold this view that it by just thinking about relations and things like this or whatever that causes them to arouse that this n does not break a person's fast, whether they did it intentionally or unintentionally. And the evidence for this is an Abi Huraira radiAllahu taala anhu and Nabiya sallallahu alaihi wasallam qad in Allah tajawus li ummati amma waswasat o haddathat or haddathat bihi anfusiha ma lam ta'mil bihi o takallam ruah bukhari wa muslim in this hadith of uh, the hadith of Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said 
that a, verily Allah has overlooked or forgiven my ummah, my nation, for what they have thought about or what was being whispered to them from within, from the shaitan, or themselves, that they were whispering to themselves, not outwardly, meaning inside, this was internally what they were thinking about, basically, and, and so forth. And as long as they do not act upon it, or speak about it, and that's collected in Bukhari and Muslim, meaning that the person who is thinking or being whispered, they're whispering, they're like, man, I want to look at this, I want to look at that girl, or this and that and the other, or whatever the situation is that is enticing them and uh, causing them to be aroused, that in that situation, that this could either be a form of waswas or there or hadith and nafs that they are. It either could be from the shaitan whispering to you or yourself uh, internally whispering and thinking about uh, something muharram. And the Prophet ﷺ said, as long as the person doesn't speak about it or act upon that act, then Allah has forgiven them and, and they are not held accountable. So that is from the mercy of the Sharia and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how is this evidence for what we're saying? Because to think about those about relations and things like this, this is from hadith and nafs. This is from hadith and nafs. And this is something which is excused in the Sharia, according to that hadith of the Prophet wasallam. So meaning a person who is just thinking about relations and so forth, but they're not acting upon it. They're thinking about this and this, but they're not going to the computer and looking for something haram. They're not going to the marketplace and in the mall and looking at something haram or something like this. They haven't acted upon it, nor are they speaking about it, nor are they telling their friends, saying, man, I want to do this. Or I like this, and da da da, da and you know whatever. Then this intern, this as long as it remains internal, and you know perhaps that they're trying to fight off those things, they haven't acted upon it. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will excuse them. They are excused in the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. The last issue. Actually, there's a couple of other very important issues, and we'll quickly go over them. Uh, one thing is the ruling regarding the person who has a wet dream during the month of Ramadan. مَنْ نَامَ فَاحْتَلَمْ فِي النَّهَارَ رَمَضَانَ فَصَوْمُهُ صَحِيْهِ So, ijma of the ulama, the consensus of the scholars, say that the person who sleeps and then they have a wet dream during the month of Ramadan, during the day of Ramadan, one of the days of Ramadan, then their fasting is still sound. And this is according to Ijma of the Ulama that they, uh, the consensus of scholars, and from those Ulama that said it's Ijma are uh, Ibn Abdul Bar uh, and Imam Nawawi, Imam Ibn, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahimahumullah Ta'ala Jami'an. Another important issue, the last issue we're going to talk about, and we've talked about this in one form or another before, and this is regarding midi. So we were just talking about mini. Mini is, is we're talking about sperm, we're talking about uh, full ejaculation, you know, from a climax. But midi is like premature ejaculation. So the ruling is different. From mini, from ejaculating fully from climax, then this, you have to take a ghusl. And again, we just talked about the different states of when it uh, breaks your fast. Moving on to mithi, when mithi comes from you, it does not break your fasting. So if a person, and this is in accordance uh, with the Hanafiya scholars, the Shafi'iyya, and this is one of the ruwaya, or one of the opinions of Imam Ahmed. Rahimahumullah Jamian. And Ibn Mundar also held this view, what Imam As-Sin'ani also held this view.
And then from our modern scholars, Ibn Uthaymeen, rahimahullah ta'ala, also held this view that uh, Mithi, you know, that if you premature ejaculate, this does not break your fast. And this is because when you have Mithi, it's closer to urine than sperm, or perhaps it's even almost an in-between. And that it is, uh, as far as the hukum, the hukum is closer to urine in that you just have to wash your private part and make wudu. If it breaks your, you know, it breaks your wudu. But it does not break your fasting. And this is because we have no evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah to say that it breaks your fast. And this comes up to a, a Sharia principle which is very important in the Sul of Fiqh, which is uh, al asl al Al Asl Baka Alama Kana Alama Kan or Kamaqal or Kamaqil that it's a Sharia principle which means that the foundation or the origin of something is that it is on what it originally was upon. So in this situation is the origin of your fasting is that it's sound, that you are fasting, it's sound. Unless, of course, something comes to change it from being sound, like you ejaculated or something. So it maintains on the origin, because we have no nus, we have no evidence to show that uh, premature ejaculation breaks your fasting. We have no evidence for that. So, the asl, alama kana, alama kana ale, or the asl, the or, the, the, that fasting stays intact, meaning you have not broken your fast, because it remains in its original state that you were fasting, and we have no evidence to show that it breaks your fast, so you're still fasting. You just need to clean your private part, make wudu, you know, for, for your prayer, and keep fasting. And this is also due to the fact that the Sharia also allows for a person who can control themselves to, that is permissible, to kiss their spouse and massage their spouse and so forth without their private parts and, and, and you know and having sexual relations and doing those things which cause a person to fully ejaculate to have sperm and, and orgasm and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم